a great time to be a Christian. You agree? You should. <laughs> it really is a great time to be a Christian, and we're going to talk about that today on Creation Magazine Live. Welcome to Creation Magazine Live. I'm Richard Fangrad. And I'm Calvin Smith. Today we're going to talk about how great it is to be a Christian today. What's the matter with you? <laughs> I mean, you talk to well, people... That's the reaction that you get, right? No, exactly. Yeah, you say, it's a great time to be a Christian. People say, well, what are you talking about? I mean, you know, look at the Western world nations in just a couple of generations. They've, they've backslidden. We're, we're less Christian. There's anti-Christian laws being put into place now yeah. in our country yep. and, and, and other Western world countries. Uh, um, you know, look at look at church attendance. It's dropping. Uh, what are we going to do with the youth? I mean, most people, would, you say it's a great time to be a Christian. They look at you like you got three three eyes or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, right? we're gonna, we're, well, we'll maintain that position. That's yeah. a great time to be a Christian. If you take a global view, things right. are a little bit different. Yes, in Western nations, as you mentioned, and, and 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 most Christians are aware of these things. Church attendance is dropping. Those those kinds of things. But that's not true globally. Globally, Christianity is growing. It's actually right. on the increase. Yeah. Hard to believe in 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 kind of Canada, U.S., uh, Western nations, and yeah. so on. Um, a decade ago or so, uh, some African nations were reporting 28,000 people a day <laughs> making professions of faith and yeah. things like that. It's just just incredible. Um, uh, professor Fenyan Yang, uh, he's professor of sociology at Purdue University and author of Religion in China, mm. Survival and Revival Under Communist Rule. He said this, by my calculations, China is destined to become the largest Christian country in the world very soon. He said, he said elsewhere, it's going to be less than a generation. Wow. That's incredible. China's a huge country. It is definitely a and, huge uh, country. A lot of Christians there. Um, and so you, if we take a global view, Christianity is on the increase, it's a good time to be a Christian. Right. I mean, what if um, China, you know, what if the government changes and, and allows Christianity to be um, mainstream, Well, so that's to something to consider, isn't it? Yeah, it you certainly know, if, is, in a couple of different ways, actually. Yeah, yeah. Right? Think, think of just the economic impact of that. I mean, you can't have a robust economy if you don't have the Christian morality in place. Do not lie, do not steal, do not cheat, don't, don't embezzle funds from your company, uh, don't, don't, don't seek your own good, you know, you're part of an organization and so on. That, yeah. that all comes from a biblical morality. Take that away and you have bribery, you have all kinds of things uh, happening there. S some of these nations that, that didn't have a Christian morality years ago, they're, they're now, you know, you see Christianity coming on with the parents. The children of those parents raised in, in Christian homes, presumably yep. where the Bible is taught, when they take positions of leadership and start forming companies and so on, right. and you know, in a generation or two, uh, who knows how that'll change? Something interesting to consider. Yeah, of course, history shows that um, you know where persecution increases, the church often gets stronger as well, right? Yeah. I mean. Yeah. It's interesting because you look at it and you say, well, okay, the church is declining here in the Western world, but, you know, typically there have been a lot of people that call themselves Christians. You know, if you put out a poll or something like that and you said, okay, are you a Muslim, Christian, yes, this, yes, you yeah. know, people put down Christian. Well, I'm a Christian, you're a Christian, everybody's a Christian. Yeah. But there's a difference between um, the visible church and, and, and the true church, true church, right? The people that have actually dedicated their lives to Christ, that have submitted to His authority, that have admitted their sinners and need salvation and have repented of that and, uh, and they're following Him. And so, uh, yes, we would say overall, certain of the Western world countries certainly are less Christian in a sense, but also we're starting to see the increase of robust churches where the Word of God is proclaimed faithfully, boldly, and there's a stand being taken. Yes. It's not just like, yes. oh, well, we're going to water it all down and everybody just loves everybody and we'll just sing Kumbaya and we'll call ourselves, ourselves Christians. So there's, a, there's a, a difference there too, right? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's not like we're looking for persecution. Persecution can, can be helpful in some ways, but we're not looking for oh, that. Right. Yeah. There's, yeah, there's per a, persecute me. Yeah, persecute <laughs> me. That's great. Um, if, if you look at Acts 5.41, was talking about the apostles after they were preaching the gospel. Then they left the presence of the council rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer dishonor for the name, for Jesus. Yeah. Why were they rejoicing under persecution? Here's why. Matthew 5, 11 and 12. Be Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. 
Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. That's right. And uh, See, I mean, really the point is we're at the end of 2,000 years of church history now. Yes. And, and, yeah. and many things which weren't clear in the past uh, have been thoroughly investigated by, by godly men and women. They've, they've looked through this stuff. And in a weekend reading, you know, you, be, you, you become a Christian, you, you can start looking at things and you can learn things that took multiple lifetimes exactly. and a great deal of yes. study to learn. It, it is a great time to be a Christian. You can just kind of get up to speed real quick in, in, in that sense. But anyway, we'll, right. we'll discuss this uh, in more detail when we get back. Imagine hearing that someone has just won the lottery three times in the same year or a golfer has hit five consecutive holes in one. We approach such improbable stories with healthy skepticism. Considering the formation of the first living cell by a perfect arrangement of carbohydrates, fats, proteins and genetic material in a warm pond, Nobel Prize winner Francis Crick said, it seems almost impossible to give any numerical value to the probability of what seems a rather unlikely sequence of events. An honest man could only state that in some sense the origin of life appears at the moment to be almost a miracle. The evolutionist Robert Shapiro at this point would prefer to abandon all skepticism. Why need the event have been probable? We can just stare at the odds, shrug and note with thanks how lucky we were. When we abandon healthy skepticism, only gullibility remains to invoke miracles without God. To find out more from Creation Ministries International, visit our website, creation.com. Welcome back. Today we're talking about it's a great time to be a Christian. And we were just mentioning how, you know, a, a believer today comes to faith in Christ. And of course, that's, that's a, actually, a, in a sense, a very simple thing. And of course, then the scripture is very complex as well. Because once you start reading the Bible, I remember the first time I read the Bible, I was like, wow, you know, this is so comprehensive and it touches upon so many things. And then you start yes. to, 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 to learn about all these things. And we were saying how, you know, in one weekend now, we've got... 2,000 years of church history, yeah, and, yeah. and all these things, these challenges that came against the church, godly men and women looked at these things, have investigated them, have, have written whole you know, books and, and things like that. And, and so, for example, our ministry deals with science, and there have been yes. challenges from, yes. uh, people have tried to use from a field of science to challenge the scripture, but, but we have so much data today to support our faith. It, it's a great time to be a Christian. Yeah, and, and that's, that's part of it. It, I get really excited when there's some new science, some new discovery that adds more support to our faith. Right. And that's what we do as a ministry. We're not saying, well, look at this interesting science, look at these observations, and then let's use that to understand, to twist and turn God's word so that it matches the, the observations. Yeah. We use those things to, to support our faith. Our faith is reasonable. It's a supported faith. Right. We're a presuppositional ministry, which means we yes. presuppose that God's word is true. But then when you see how the, the, the facts that we find how that can be interpreted according to our to God's word so easily, like yes. it just dovetails right in. Yeah, it's exciting. It's support for our faith yeah. that that people living before us didn't have. That's why we're saying it's a great time to be a Christian That's today. Right. We'll give you some examples. Yeah. Uh, back in not that long ago, eighty six to ninety four, progressively over those years, catastrophic plate tectonics. Yeah, that was that was a um, uh, one of the leading researchers in uh, uh, leading physicists in plate tectonics and modeling plate tectonics on a large scale on a continent wide scale. Uh, started started doing some serious research and putting out papers showing how this may have been going on during Noah's flood. And that model has tremendous explanatory power. Mountain chains and the ocean ridge and the magnetic banding of the rocks along the, the, the mid-Atlantic ridge, for, uh, for example, and elsewhere. Right. And it has a lot of explanatory power of what may have been going on geologically in the flood. Right. And, that's, and, and before that time with continental drift, and how, how do we as Christians explain the fit of the continents and so on? There wasn't a good model right. to understand that. Now there is. Yeah. So we're post-catastrophic plate tectonics. That's a, it's a great model. It adds support to our faith. There's and, one and example. Bible-believing Christians believed in the, in the flood anyway before that. So it wasn't like we needed Baumgartner to come along and, oh, now right. we can believe the Bible. Yes. But it's just that, oh, yeah, this makes so much sense and it's exciting. Another example, I mean, one of the, the biggest, uh, you know, weapons that uh, skeptics would use is, look, you guys are just talking about a young earth, but we've got light from, from stars that are right. billions of light years away. Yeah. If it took billions of, of years for the light to travel here, the, the universe must be very old. Uh, you know, young earth uh, creationism just doesn't make sense. And then, of course, Dr. Russell Humphreys in, in 1994 came out with Starlight and Time. And that was like a, 
a blow away, right? It yes. was just like, whoa, yeah. okay. So yeah. he, he tipped everything on its head. He said, okay, forget about light traveling faster. What about time? And yeah. he got into this time dilation model. Relativity. It was, a, it was the first yeah. time relativity had been applied to uh, you know, creationist models of, of the large scale structure exactly. of the universe. And, really and of exciting. course, th that's gone on now to spawn probably about five or six, maybe seven different creationist models. And there's, you know, some people say, well, this is a, more, this is a better model than that. But it yeah. really opened up that field and, and let people know, yeah, we have a robust explanation for that challenge, supposed yes. challenge yeah. to scripture. In 2005, moving forward a little, little more recently, uh, Dr. John Sanford, yes. a very well-known geneticist, inventor of the gene gun, uh, started life as an atheist. Ev he said evolution was his religion. Yep. He processed all data through that kind of framework, that history, millions of years. And he wrote the book, Genetic Entropy and the Mystery of the Human Genome. Yep. In another field, that uh, that hadn't been written on too much by creationists before that time, but he just some amazing, powerful, powerful evidence from genetics right. that humans could not have been evolving for millions because of, of years. Because of genetic decay, of genetic yes. collapse, how we couldn't have been around for that long because we w would already have been extinct. And, yeah, and just, yeah. yeah. it's another reason that today is a great time to be a Christian. Yeah. We've got all this support. All this uh, evidence of soft tissue in, in dinosaur bones, you know, back in 1990, they actually found blood, or blood cells in, yeah, in dinosaurs. first kind of major discovery, yeah. yeah. And then soft tissue in 2005, and now there's over 30 instances of soft tissue being found in dinosaurs. I mean, how much more powerful evidence could you have that the earth is young and that these creatures didn't die out millions of years ago, they died out very recently in a great flood. And, it, and again, as you say, it's just powerful evidence that supports the Bible. Right. And uh, we'll get into more of that when we get back. Many Christians today have a diminished view of the Bible because they can't answer questions like, is there really a God? What about evolution? Are there facts to back up the Bible? Or is it all just faith? Creation Ministries expert speakers visit churches all over the world to help pastors equip their congregations to understand that the whole Bible, even Genesis, is accurate. We help to demolish the arguments that the world uses to try to convince people that the Bible isn't true. For more information on getting a CMI speaker to visit your church, contact your nearest CMI office through our website. So we're talking about how it's a great time to be a Christian. We have just uh, went through some great evidences that, again, support our, our faith in Scripture and, uh, and so on. But, uh, of course, um, there are, are many attacks against uh, Christianity, philosophical attacks, or, right. or different areas, right? The new atheists, they enjoy attacking Christianity, and they've got these arguments and stuff yes, like that. Yes, they do. <laughs> but the fact is, most of these arguments are just repackaged arguments from long time ago. Uh, not, already been refuted. Already been refuted. And for example, we already have answers to those things. So it's not like we as Christians ne need to just sit here and get pounded by this yes. stuff and wow, they got, you know, they read the Bible and look at, they noticed this verse. And <laughs> it, it's like, yeah, we've kind of noticed that verse before. But of course, many people haven't been exposed to apologetics. And that's what our right. ministry is, is all yeah. about. And so for example, uh, Christianity for Skeptics, fantastic book, Great book. to yeah. deal with uh, so many of these arguments that the new skeptics are, are coming out. How do you even know there's a God and is it more logical to be uh, an atheist than a, than a Christian and, and all well, this Well, that's what they claim, right? They claim atheism is rational and logical and they're following the facts to their conclusion right. and stuff. Yeah. And, uh, actually, no. Logically, we, we defeat them there too. But anyway, I encourage you to check out that book, Christianity for Skeptics. You can get it at creation.com and, uh, and it's just a fantastic book. Of course, yeah. um, the, the secular philosopher, uh, George Santayana, said, those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it, right? And, um, and King Solomon wrote something similar, actually, in Ecclesiastes. He said, yeah. uh, what has been is what will be, and what has been done is what will be done, and there is nothing new under the sun. Is there a thing of which it is said, see, this is new? So, that... Put, put, putting those two thoughts together, right. by studying the errors of the past throughout 2,000 years of church history, right. you know, we're here 2,000 years after Christ and so on, and, and seeing how those errors were, were refuted with biblical truth, in a sense, we can, we can recognize some of the modern counterparts, the, the false ideas, the heresies, if you want to use that strong word, right. that we see in the church today. We don't have to refight those battles. They've already been fought yep. and decided... And, and, and the error has been refuted definitively with Scripture in the past. Yeah, they, they get repackaged. You know, they have different names and, and, different names. and that kind of thing. And, and typically yeah. today you'll see a lot of these uh, old arguments kind of repackaged, but just with a kind of a, a modern hip sounding jargon and, and a lot of sarcasm thrown in and, and some, some humor and then sometimes people get fooled. But, but if you just go back to the basic, what's the heart of the error? 
yes. that they're talking yeah. about here. Yeah, the church councils, we dealt with this a long time ago. And different church councils get together. The first church council we read about in the New Testament there, that's the Judaizers. It's legalism. Right. Legalism crept in. We read about this heresy right. creeping into the, the early church 2,000 years ago. Yep. And the Jerusalem Council there where, where Paul has to rebuke P Peter to some extent. Right. Uh, people were saying, well, you have to add works to grace. It's grace and works. It's works right. and faith and so on. And Paul says, no, we don't require people to be circumcised or, 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 or conform to the law. Right. Uh, that it's, you it's don't have to eat specific saved. types of food or, right. yep. or things like that. We know there's certain, certain people that are going to do that and we want to be graceful with them and stuff. But as a Christian, you can just read the scripture and understand you don't have to yes. do things and, to be saved. And today, when we see that error creeping into our own lives, our own thinking, our, yep. our own churches and so on, we don't have to rehash all those arguments. We can, just, we can learn from the errors of the past right. and see how they were refuted and just move on. Right. Um, Second century, of course, you had the Gnostics. The Gnostics, and they, yeah. And they're d denying the reality of, of the, the incarnation, right? That, yeah. The, you know. the idea that dualism, Gnosticism is a little hard to explain. It's, it has a lot of similarities to the modern New Age movement. Right. But uh, the, the Gnostics, one of the ideas they had was a dualistic idea, that spirit is good and matter is bad. So they said, well, Jesus couldn't really be fully man. Right. He couldn't, he couldn't really be fully human. Because he's made of matter. Because he's made of matter. That's bad. And so there's this dualism. Yeah. And... Uh, and that was refuted. You know, you, you can see hints of that creeping in as the later books, the later, later epistles are written there in the New Testament. Yep. And, uh, and, and we can learn from that. The Arian controversy. Right. I, the Arian controversy, I've, I've, I've studied that to some extent. I think some, somebody should make a movie of that. It's a, <laughs> it, it's a, it would make a great drama. There, the, okay, Christ wasn't God. That was the obvious one. Christ isn't really God. He's a very moral person and so on. And we yeah. hear that today a lot. Oh, of course. There's many religions, like the modern religions, like the yes. Jehovah's Witnesses, yeah. uh, would, would say things like that, right? But, but those things, I mean, the, the, the Nicene Creed, light of light, God of God, those battles have already been fought, and it's a great time to be a Christian today. We don't need to refight those battles. Right, and it's not That's like somebody just made, made something up, well, this is what we believe now, and we should all believe it. I mean, if you go back and study these things and look, okay, look at this scripture, look at this scripture. Yeah, yes. but what about this scripture? Well, look at this scripture. They went through it. They didn't just come to some decision like, okay, we're all going to believe this now, right? Okay, okay. They came to it from a biblical uh, perspective, and of course, you don't just have to put your trust in some counsel, you put your trust in, 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 in and look what the scripture says that came to that decision. Exactly, yeah, and we'll pick it up in just a minute. Who would have ever thought that scratches in rocks could disprove the biblical flood? Well, scratches in rock, called striations, are sometimes caused by a glacier moving over bedrock. Therefore, when geologists encounter striated rock, they often claim that a glacier caused it. Striated rock occurs within the sedimentary rocks that were laid down by Noah's flood. Evolutionary geologists claim this is evidence of multiple ancient ice ages, so they claim that Noah's year-long flood could not have laid down these rocks. However, we now know that underwater landslides cause rock striations similar to those caused today by glaciers. Furthermore, there are important differences between glacial deposits formed today and those of the alleged ancient ice ages. So don't let scratches in rocks scratch away your confidence in God's Word. To find out more from Creation Ministries International, visit our website, creation.com. Okay, this week we're talking about how it's great to be a Christian. This is a great time to be a Christian. It is. Uh, so many uh, resources, for example, that, yes. that we have at our fingertips today that many, many Christians, uh, you know, lived their entire lives, um, perhaps had had copy of the Scripture, but not much else. Yeah. But look at what we have today. Yeah, and, had, and from the Scriptures had big questions about things that, uh, that they never got answers to. That's we right. have resources for those things today. We sure do. And of course, we deal with creation, evolution, these types of uh, right. science issues and things like that. But um, you know, just think of the amount of books. You go to creation.com, you go to our, our web store, and you look at the amount of books, the authors and, and the, uh, uh, the brilliant scientists that have just gone through you know, incredibly detailed uh, uh, information in all aspects of the creation evolution debate. Yeah. Look at some of the DVDs that are available. We've got uh, downloadable uh, videos that people can get. Um, creation Magazine. I mean, it, it's been around now for yeah. getting close yeah. to 40 years of, of a magazine that you can subscribe to, comes into your home, 
It, it's information scrutinized by our, our scientific staff, gone through by our, 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 uh, the people looking at the theology of what, you know, how it relates. Family magazine, you know, uh, right. the, the TV yeah. show. I mean, we, we wouldn't be able to do the TV show without that information, right? Creation Magazine Live. Yeah, that's where we get our information from yeah. for this program. Um, yeah. You can have but, a speaker in your, in, your, in your church, you know, you're like, well, yeah, but how do, how do we learn about this stuff? Well, CMI, just yeah. the, with seven offices worldwide, you want a speaker, contact one of the offices, say, hey, listen, we'd love to have a speaker in your church. Yeah. And when we arrive, we're going to bring resources with us. Yes. So you don't have to go even yeah. doing that. It, and, it, it's and, and the resources we carry, we, we carry resources from, from uh, scientists from all over the world and, right. uh, and researchers and, and just, just good resources, books, DVDs, and so on yeah. uh, from, from all over the world. And it's not just our own, our own guys, but uh, th those have been previewed, they've been carefully screened. Uh, any flaky theology or flaky science, we, we, we try to keep those out of our listing, and yet right. we have, oh, is it over 500? Yeah. titles of, of books and DVDs. It's a huge amount of resources that people 40 years ago never had. Right. If, if, if Christians living 40, 50, 60 and, and before had, had questions about, you know, where did Cain get his wife or how did Noah get all the animals on the ark or how can you build a large wooden structure like that that, that would survive the waves of the flood. Exactly. And, and all of these questions that our ministry deals with and then outside of creation, all of the other questions that people have. Where, what about the existence for God? How do we know that the Bible hasn't changed down through the years, has been copied over and over right. again? There are answers for all these questions today that years ago weren't there. That's why it's a great time to be a Christian today. Study tools like uh, your idea. You know, we had all our, our articles on our website, and, you, and then you thought, well, why don't we have a Genesis verse by verse site? And, and of course, that's built it right into creation.com. So, for example, a pastor or anyone yeah. really want to do a Genesis Bible study, you can go through it and you can read, you know, in the beginning, you can, you can read the, 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 the verse. is arranged by, by Bible verse from Genesis right. 1 to Genesis 1. You, you read these, these uh, scriptures, and then, you, and then over, it, oh, yeah, that question ari could arise from this or that. Or, and it, it's just a great way to package it and anybody yeah. has access to that. It's a they free had... online tool. I mean the internet. The internet is <laughs> just by itself. It, the, the internet was in the, in the early days called the information highway. Anybody remember that term? Yeah. That's a bit, a bit of an old term. But we have the greatest information that's ever been. You know how, how sinners can be saved. That, that's fantastic information. And then and then of course our focus as a ministry is on the early chapters of the Bible and so on. Yeah. And we want to share great information on the information highway. Yeah. Of course, all that's free, and, and internet's free. You don't need to sign, get a subscription to our website or whatever. Yeah, I encourage uh, people to go to uh, the verse by verse. Go to creation.com/vbv, and you can check out the Genesis ver verse by verse. That's a fantastic yeah. tool. We should talk about the Answers book. The Answers book is our most popular book because in one book it covers a huge range of topics, more than sixty of the of the most asked questions right. in a single resource. And uh, you can get that uh, at thirty percent off. Just use this code CMLCAB Creation Answers Book when you check out of the web store. You can get that book, our most popular book, for thirty percent off. The reason that the Creation Answers Book is so popular is because it covers a huge range of topics and answers more than sixty of the most asked questions about Genesis and the creation evolution issue. Questions like, what is the evidence for God's existence? Could the days in Genesis 1 be long periods of time? How did all the animals fit on Noah's Ark? Does radioisotope dating prove that the Earth is very old? Where do dinosaurs fit into the Bible? And many more. To order your copy, visit creation.com. Welcome back to Creation Magazine Live. Um, we, we've been talking about how great it is to be a Christian today with all the resources we have and the truth that's been refined over the years. Uh, of many people working on defining truth from Scripture, starting from Scripture, yep. and uh, and discovering what it really says. Yep. Uh, now, evolutionists haven't been silent either. They're, they're, they try to clarify their argument as well. Of course, as creationists it, have exposed some of the major flaws. In yes, their yeah. and I thought this article was interesting. You're talking about things that are in the news, happening in the news. It sort of relates to our topic on the show today. Um, this was by Robert Carter, one of our geneticists down at our U.S. office, uh, slaying yesterday's dragons. And he starts this way. Darwinianism as a science has been evolving. That is, it has changed from, from its original concept and continues to change. It would, do well, it would do us well to pay attention to the latest trends so as not to be caught arguing against yesterday's theory. 
When Charles Darwin initially postulated that all species could be traced back to a single common ancestor, he suggested that the mechanism causing these changes was natural selection. That was in 1859. Later, he backed off from his initial hypothesis and suggested that other forms of selection, for example, sexual selection, were not only involved, but they were more important. Worse, not knowing anything about genetics, he came up with and strongly promoted Lamarckianism and the idea that uh, the environment caused changes in organisms which were then inherited by their offspring. This, uh, con this was contradicted by his contemporary, Gregor Mendel, who published The Laws of Genetics in 1864, but that was the state of evolutionary theory at the close of the 19th century. Right, and of course, uh, after that came Neo-Darwinism, which yeah. said, okay, well, we need some way to uh, create new genetic information. If we're going to go to ponds, come to people, uh, there would have had to be an, an, an upward uh, you know, increase in genetic information. This creature doesn't have eyes. Where, where did the information for eyes come from? Birds, feathers, all that kind of stuff. And of course, uh, with what we're learning from genetics today, the idea of mutations, uh, spelling errors in, in, in DNA, uh, yes. creating new information, that's... that's Absolutely devastating evolution. Yeah, that, that's so. going out the window. So you're getting all these new kinds of idea. Now, they, they stick to the concept of evolution. Yes, we right. evolved. Like the basics, the historical timeline, millions of years and so on, right. that is, that is a we, given. But we need new mechanisms. We right. need new, yep. new ways to explain it and stuff like that. And so one of the comments uh, Rob said is, things are shifting under our feet. We need to be careful not to be caught slaying yesterday's dragon. Yet the new trends within science do not necessarily require a different type of counter-argument. Interestingly, I find myself arguing population genetics as a cogent weapon when confronted by these newer ideas. I find myself talking about what we know about physics and chemistry and how that contradicts all the ideas about the physical origin of life from non-life. Mm -hmm. You're almost getting these quasi-philosophical uh, type arguments from evolutionists now yes. about how matter yes. has some kind of inherent power in it to, yeah. to, to, to self-organize self and, yeah. and all yeah. this kind of stuff. And, you know, when I was in school, I'm 47 now, so that was a while ago, but when I was in school, it, it all seemed to be about the facts. Look at the facts, and science has proven this, and, you know, and, yes. and, you know, yes. and, and it was really all this kind of thing. And now you're, you're kind of getting this pagan kind of Gaia kind of hypothesis where matter just kind of knows what it should need to do. And, right. And you're like, really? Kind of interesting. That's the, the, it's always been claimed to be science. Well, we're, we're following science, and it's all about the facts, and we, yep. do, we have scientists, and we're doing science, and now it's... It's, uh, as Rob is pointing out in this article here, it's, it's going a little different direction. Yeah, as he sums up, in short, there's, there is, to this point, no coherent science coming from this new paradigm of neo-pagan metaphysics with nature as a self-creating entity demonstrating that the battle is really being waged at a deeper philosophical level. Actually, most of the arguments that creationists have used are still powerful arguments against um, what the evolution has been coming up with, Absolutely. even with yeah. this new trend towards this Gaia hypothesis. Right. See you next time.